This video will show experiments that support and can be explained by quantum atom theory and artist theory on the physics of time as a physical process. Many of these experiments cannot be explained by mainstream physics. If we take the effect sound waves have on falling water through the air, I have found no explanation of why, at certain frequencies, the water should form what seems to be standing waves in the shape of sine waves relative to the sound. This theory can explain this effect by explaining time as an emergent property. The atoms of the object will form their own time or space-time by slowing up the rate that time flows relative to their position and their own energy and momentum. This is a process of continuous energy exchange formed by the absorption and emission of light or electromagnetic radiation, with the future coming into existence photon by photon within each reference frame. In this theory, gravity is just a secondary force to the electromagnetic force, and objects just free fall towards the greatest energy, because it has the greatest time dilation. Now if we think of water as just free falling towards the greatest time dilation, relative to its position and its own energy and momentum, the energy and momentum is represented here by the flow of the water. If we then send sound waves through the air, at certain frequencies they will resonate with the atoms of the water. This will form photon oscillations relative to the position of the sound waves and the atoms of the water. In this theory it is logical that if these photon oscillations form their own time by slowing up the rate that time flows, they will distort the geometry of the free-falling water over a period of time in that individual reference frame, and this is what we observe. This has to fit in with all observations, and it can seem odd that if gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force, then how is it that gravity can bend light? This has been observed in the form of gravitational lensing, when light can be seen to bend relative to a foreground object. But this simple experiment shows that light can easily be bent by the energy and momentum of the reference frame it is moving through. The laser beam will radiate out from its own reference frame and when it comes in contact with the atoms within the water we have the absorption and emission of the light relative to the movement of those atoms within that reference frame over a period of time. In my other videos I explain this process that we see and feel as time as a spontaneous process of symmetry forming and breaking. This spontaneous process of symmetry forming and breaking can also be seen in the chemical experiment known as the BZ reaction that is a spontaneous self-organizing activity forming patterns of concentric rings the cause can be very little, just light or photon energy can create this process of spontaneous symmetry forming. If you break this symmetry by putting a hot wire into it, you will form rotating spirals. But to create broken symmetry, there has to be a process of symmetry forming to start with. In this theory, this symmetry represents symmetry not just in space, but also in the form of time symmetry linked to the electron being the most spherical object in the universe. This symmetry can easily be seen in this experiment performed in zero gravity on the International Space Station. In zero gravity a candle flame will not be distorted by gravity and will form a sphere. The interaction of the flame will be on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. The way light acts in this experiment in zero gravity fits in totally with the spherical symmetry of this theory, with light radiating out in every direction forming a sphere in three-dimensional space, with the surface of the sphere forming a two-dimensional boundary condition. In quantum mechanics, light can be a wave and a particle at the same time. I believe this can be explained in a rational way that fits in with the reality of our everyday life. This can be done without changing the principles of wave-particle duality. All that is needed is a deeper understanding of time 
as a physical process. Everything we do is done over a period of time. Every observation, every scientific experiment that has ever been carried out has been done over a period of time. But we have no understanding of what the moment of now is. This has to be the most important moment in any observation or scientific experiment. If we look at an experiment that cannot be explained by modern physics, you will see what I mean. The two-slit experiment is very simple, but we have no rational or objective understanding of why the light acts the way it does. But if we look at the two-slit experiment as a process over a period of time, with time being formed photon by photon, within the reference frame of the experiment, it can make sense. Light waves will come in contact with the plate with the two slits collapsing into new photons with a position in space and time. The light waves that do not come in contact with the plate will go through both slits. The waves will then form constructive and destructive interference over a period of time and an interference pattern will build up on the screen photon by photon. This interference pattern will continue as time unfolds photon by photon within the isolated reference frame of the experiment. Just as in Newtonian physics only when an external force comes in contact with the light does the interference pattern collapse. When an observer tries to see which slit the photon went through by turning on an electronic detector forming a new photon-electron coupling, the interference pattern collapses. This is because the photon-electron coupling represents a new moment in time, the moment of now, within the reference frame of the experiment. If the observer turns off the electronic detector, the interference pattern will reform over a period of time, photon by photon. In this theory, we have a universal interactive process the same interference pattern can be seen when sunlight breaks through clouds forming rays of sunlight. The universe is in a process of continuous creation continuously coming into existence with each new photon oscillation. Because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force electrical potential is the same potential we have with any future event within our own reference frame that we can interact with turning the possible into the actual. In this theory we only need three dimensions and one variable of time. The parallel universes of U Everett and the multiple dimensions of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities within individual reference frames in our one three-dimensional universe. The next experiment will be carried out in a reference frame that is approaching absolute zero Lowering the energy level to near absolute zero forms an effect known as superconductivity. This creates levitation, defying the gravitational pull of the whole Earth. As the temperature approaches absolute zero, the entropy reaches its minimum value. It is as though they are frozen in time within their own reference frame. At absolute zero, there is a complete ejection of magnetic field lines from the interior of the superconductor as it moves into the superconducting state. There are also forces of attraction called magnetic pinning locking the two objects together. There are mathematical theories to explain superconductivity but these theories only explain some of the interactions without giving us a dynamic objective explanation for the levitation that we observe in the experiment. But the levitation we see at absolute zero makes logical sense if gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. In this theory, without the exchange of photon energy and the movement of electromagnetic fields, there will be no gravitational force. Because as the temperature approaches absolute zero, there will be no energy in the interior of the superconductor to form the time dilation for an object to free fall towards the greatest energy. As the temperature approaches absolute zero, the time for the interior of the superconductor 
would run infinitely fast, there would be no flow of time. Only when the temperature starts to increase does the photon energy reappear and the object will then free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate the time flows in that reference frame. Please subscribe and rate. It will help in the promotion of this theory.